Hello, Piney 6th graders, and for the last time on my YouTube mini lessons, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you're watching. Folks, I've got three things to talk about today, okay? First, what is your assignment for this week? Well, for most of you, it's going to be very, very easy. I want you to take a look at your Ed Puzzle account. I want you to look in that no due date column for the assignments. And if all your assignments are done, you are done. If you haven't done all those, I want you to make them up. Okay, make do the ones you haven't done. Okay, we got through meteorology and weather forecasting last week, and that was really the last thing we needed to cover. Okay, had we been together in school, I would have covered the things we covered deeper. Okay, but in terms of the different topics we were going to cover, we got to all of them. So considering how different things have been, I'm happy with that. So your science assignment for this week is to make sure all your science assignments are done. Okay, two other uh, things to talk about. Second, okay, uh, the parade on the 27th. I don't know if you all get the newsletters or not, your parents do, but there's going to be a drive through parade on the 27th where cars will funnel through Splash Station and then Piney and we teachers will have a chance to wave and in the instance of sixth graders give you a round of applause. I know it's not as good as a full-on clap out, but I at least want to see you and congratulate you for having made it through your elementary experience and wish you well on to middle school. So hopefully I can see all of you there. If you can't make it, well, respect to you anyway. I'm proud of you for having made it this far. Last but not least, summer assignments. You may say, oh, Mr. Warr, that's cheating. You can't give me grades. You can't do that. Well, here's the thing. I know I can't, but I want to sell you on the importance of something that I would like you to do over the summer. Okay. Our goal is for you to not lose the knowledge that you've gained, both when we were meeting in the classroom and when we were instructing digitally, when you show up for your first day of seventh grade. And there is one really, really good way to do that. That is reading books. Okay, There's something called the summer slide. And I'm not talking about the slide at the playground or the slide at a water park, the fun ones. This is not a good summer slide. The summer slide is when students forget things that they learned in their younger years of school that then you have to spend the first couple months of school getting those things back on track. It'd be much better to just be able to hit the ground rolling and believe it or not there is one really great way and also one pretty important way to do that. Guys, books. Students who read over the summer don't lose their knowledge and you might say well hey what if I'm just reading fiction books? How does Harry Potter going to help me in social studies or science? Guys, here's the thing. It keeps your brain engaged. It keeps those neurons, those fancy words, or that fancy word for your brain cells working. And it's been shown that students who read don't forget nearly as much over the summer. In fact, they really don't forget hardly anything at all. Okay, so I realized that getting your hands on books this summer might be a problem. Libraries may not be open, or if they are, they might be more restrictive. Okay, so I have a couple ideas for you that I want to share. First, and this is what I did. When we lost access to the school library, when it was going to be harder for me to go to bookstores or libraries, first thing I did, I'd never reread my favorite book. So I Life of Pi. I went back and I reread it. It was the first book that I read uh, once we were doing school at home digitally. And I liked it just as much the second time as the first. There were a lot of things I'd missed that I, I caught the second time. Okay, so if you have some old favorites lying around, reread those. Book exchanges with friends could also be a very good way to do this. Now, be safe about it. Ask your parents, right? Make sure they're okay with it. But I think if you, my personal thing is if my daughter wanted to share a book with a friend and we wiped down a cover, I'd be more than happy to. But again, it's up to you all. But think about a book exchange with a friend, right? Say, hey, do you have any books at your house that you really enjoyed that I could exchange one of my favorite books with you? Okay, that way we could almost have like a little mini library with people sharing books. So you also have a good like bonding talking point with your friend. Okay, but you know, that would be another good way. I looked online for different ebook things, and I can't really issue one good recommendation because like if you have a nook from Barnes and Noble, they've got tons of free books, but they're not always the same as what's lined up on a Kindle with free books. But a lot of those places, because schools are working digitally, have offered up a huge number of free kids' books 
Okay, so if you have a tablet or whatnot, you could get the Kindle app or the Nook app. Okay, and I think you'd have access to all those free books. So there's three ways that you could get your hands on some books. You may think it's weird that a science teacher is encouraging you to read, but guys, in seventh and eighth grade, your, your curriculum is going to be very vocabulary heavy. So you want to keep yourself living in this world of words over the summer instead of just in the world of Fortnite and TikTok. Do have fun. I'm not saying you can't have fun, but also read those books. If Mr. Cleveland has given you any math resources, math is another subject that you're going to use a lot in next year for science, right? You'll be doing more graphing. You'll be doing a little bit more calculations, especially with chemistry stuff. So even just simple, basic math facts to keep those neurons in your brain thinking, oh yeah, math, that's something I have to remember. That's something I have to do. Because even if just a, a game-based website you did some math practice once a week, you'd be amazed how much more you'll keep in that brain of yours that come August, you'll be ready to roll. All right, so your science work for me is finished. I wanna thank you not just for your work on your Edpuzzle account, but also for your work during the school year. I really enjoyed having you all as a group of students. You really were a great group of kids. And you know, please do come back and see us. I'd love to have a chance to say goodbye to you in person, either at the parade or if you can come back to Piney next year. Always feel free to shoot us emails. I love hearing from former students. It lights up my heart whenever I see some like a uh, name that someone I used to teach you sent me an email. So it'd be great to hear from you that way too. I uh, really, that's all I've got for you. I hope you to see you on our Wednesday Zoom chats. Right. Remember, Mr. Cleveland and I, we're not going to have our Zoom chats on Thursday because that's a day that people will be picking up school supplies. Instead, all of us teachers are going to hop in during the normal time you have your English Zoom chat so we can all see you at once. Uh, the, a couple teachers have worked very hard to have kind of a fun surprise during that chat, so you really won't want to miss it. All right, folks, hope you have a good week. Take care and see you soon.